Welcome to the third part in my tutorial series, in which I cover the basics of using Unity's XR Interaction Toolkit. In the previous tutorial, we created a simple VR scene, and then set up an XR rig within it. In order to get the XR rig working correctly with our VR hardware, we had to configure a number of components. Notably, we use components from Unity's action-based input system. However, since we wanted to get our XR rig working as quickly as possible, we did not spend much time explaining what each of these components did, and how they work together. We shall remedy that now. If you have not completed the previous tutorials in this series, I recommend that you do that now, as it will definitely help you follow along with this tutorial. There is a link to this tutorial series playlist in the description. Also, please note that I am using a MetaQuest 2 headset in this series, and that my development PC is running Windows 11. With that said, let's get straight into it. You may have noticed that there is an XR Interaction Manager in your scene hierarchy. Select it and you will see that there is an XR Interaction Manager component attached. This object was automatically created when you initially added the XR Origin. The reason that it is added, alongside the XR Origin, is because it is vital to have at least one XR Interaction Manager in your scene, for the XR Interactions to work. So what does the XR Interaction Manager do? Very simply, it acts as an intermediary between interactors and interactables. It determines which interactors are influencing which interactables at any one time. What are interactors and interactables you ask? Interactors and interactables are in fact core components within Unity's XR interaction system. So let's take a quick look at them. Interactor components are attached to game objects that need to act upon interactive objects. The obvious place for an interactor would be on the virtual representation of a touch controller in your scene. If you are using hand tracking, your VR hands would be your primary interactors. So, interactors typically directly track your physical VR devices. This isn't always the case, but that's a topic for another video. Now, let's look at interactables. Interactables are simply objects that can be affected by interactors. An interactable component allows you to define exactly how a game object reacts to an interactor. Anyway, let's get back to our scene and take a look at the XR Origin. Select the XR Origin in the scene hierarchy. Look at the inspector. Notice that there is an Input Action Manager component attached. You will notice that the Input Action Manager has a reference to an Input Actions asset. Specifically, the XRI Default Input Actions asset. The Input Action Manager's job is to automatically enable or disable all the inputs contained within the referenced Input Actions asset. In the Input Action Manager, Double click on XRI Default Input Actions. This will open the asset in the Input Actions window. The window is divided into three sections or columns, namely Action Maps, Actions and Action Properties. Action Maps are simply a container in which to group a set of actions. You may want to group together certain actions that are used for some common purpose or situation for example. If you look at our XRI default setup, you can see that we have a number of action maps. You have one action map concerned solely with actions performed by your VR headset. This is called XRI Head. Just in case anyone is wondering, let's briefly clarify what an action is, in the context of the input system. Reading from Unity's documentation, input actions are designed to separate the logical meaning of an input from the physical means of input that is activity on the input device, that generate the input. An action is basically a label that hides and abstracts away the physical means of generating the input. To illustrate, let's say you are making a first person shooter. You could create an action called fire, which would be invoked whenever the left mouse button is pressed. In this case, you would set up your gun firing function to listen for the fire action and not the left mouse button directly. The gun firing script does not need to know which input device actually triggered the action. The action has essentially created an extra step that separates the real input device from the game logic that responds to it. One advantage of this approach 
is that you can easily add support for various input devices and configurations without writing lots of additional control logic in your scripts. Anyway, this will become clearer as you begin working with the input system. Let's get back to the input actions window and the XRI head action map. You can see that it contains two actions, a position action and a rotation action. Let's expand these to reveal their input bindings. Select the position action. If you look over the action properties, you can see that it will give us a value of vector 3. The vector 3 being the X, Y and Z coordinates of the VR headset in 3D space. Notice that there is an input binding attached to the position action. Look at the binding properties and you will see that the position data is being retrieved from something called the center I position. The center I is just a 3D reference point located between the assumed left and right I positions. Anyway, click on the rotation action and you will see a similar setup. Only this time the value being retrieved is a quaternion which stores the rotation of our headset. Now, in action maps, let's select XRI left hand interaction. This contains the interactions that you can perform with your left hand touch controller. Now expand the select action. The select action is commonly used to pick up or grab interactive objects in your VR scene. Attached to the select action is an input binding. This input binding has been linked to the grip button of a generic XR controller. In the binding properties you can change the button or indeed the controller type that is associated with the select action. You can also add multiple input bindings to a single action if you so choose. Anyway, these are things to explore later once we become more familiar with the input system. Let's close the input actions window. Before we wrap up, I would like to briefly point something out on the XR controller components. In the scene hierarchy, expand the XR origin and then the camera offset within it. Click on the left hand controller. In the inspector panel, you will see that the XR controller component is attached. I would just like to show you that the XR default input actions that we were viewing a moment ago are the very same ones that are referenced in the XR controller component. This is the case with both the left hand and right hand controllers. I would also like to remind you that these default input actions are part of the starter assets that were downloaded as part of the XR Interaction Toolkit package in the previous tutorial. As you become more familiar with the input system, you can of course create your own actions from scratch. Anyway, we will leave it here for now. In the next tutorial, we will implement some basic interactions such as grabbing and activating an object. See you then.